Welcome to the Desert Workshop. My name is Shane and I'm starting this YouTube channel because as I watch YouTube, I didn't find a lot for the beginner home repair or the beginner woodworker up to intermediate. There was a lot of advanced out there and a lot of stuff that some people may just be intimidated by by watching it. It's like, there is no way I can do that. I don't have the tools to do that. Well, I'm gonna start with a crawl, walk, and run phase. You can grow as this channel grows and develop your tools, get more tools and everything. A lot of times it's the space that's the problem. But let me just tell you, I started out working on cars in a driveway. I didn't have a garage. I started woodworking. Sometimes it was in my backyard with no cover whatsoever. So I could only do it during, you know, the nice days. But I wanted to develop this channel to give you a little confidence in the stuff that you are going to do or that you want to do. Maybe give you some confidence to do it because you feel like, oh, I can't do that. But it's really easy if you just put your mind to it and you, you go through these YouTubes. My YouTube video is probably going to be pretty short, probably because I don't have the attention span or I just go off and, you know, rabbit holes talking. So I want to keep them short, keep you entertained. And yes, there may be some dad jokes in here. Video two. Anyway, the first one I'm going to cover is your protective, your personal protective equipment. You always need to have personal protective equipment. Yes, okay, not when you're changing the, the float on a toilet. You probably don't need that. But you probably do, just for me, anytime I'm doing plumbing, you're going to want some gloves. You're going to need some of these gloves. You can get these at AutoZone, Harbor Freight. It's been really hard during 2020 to find these because everybody wanted some rubber gloves because they didn't want to touch anything. But that is one of the good things. The one thing, a box like this, I think it's like $15, it'll last you for a long time. I know there's a lot of advanced people out there. Well, if you don't have grease on your hands, it ain't no good. Well, you know, some people just don't want grease and stuff from the toilet on their hands. The second thing, you're going to need some safety glasses. Of course, these are really cool and all that, but they're really nice because they actually have a bifocal for me uh, to be able to read stuff. And you also want some hearing protection. When you get into working with saws and stuff like that that have a high decibel rating, you kind of want to protect your ears. I know we've had ear phones in our ears for a long time and we're just sitting there listening to music, but you still want to protect them. You don't want to go deaf like me when you have to go, what'd you say? So moving right along from that, those are your basic ones. I would probably get a, a shirt to cover your clothes, just something that you use for work. So if you're painting, you're not getting on your other clothes, you have to throw them away. You can go down to, you know, the Salvation Army, Goodwill, go get an oversized one, put it on, just use that as your work shirt. All right, let's set up your home toolbox. Yes, you're gonna need a toolbox. Don't use a Walmart bag. These tools are gonna get kind of heavy. This guy right here has been around for about 10 years and it served me well. When I'm talking about heavy tools, let's just say a hammer. It ranges anywhere between 16 and 22 ounces. This is a claw hammer and you just need to pick out whatever weight you need, whatever you feel comfortable with. That little guy on the bottom, yeah, he's only four ounces, but that was for our children so they feel handy around the house. Right now, my wife may use it to hang up a picture, you know, put a little nail in. The next thing I would add would be the Crescent wrench. Yes, Crescent is a name brand, so let's just say adjustable wrench. You can use it for SAE or metric because it doesn't really matter. You're adjusting the size what you need. So you don't have to go run and find your 10 millimeter when you know it's gone because it's been misplaced. So just go ahead and get a crescent wrench. If you can get one that says crescent tool on the side and it's made in Jamestown, New York, get it. Because this guy has been in my family for about 30 years and it's still working. The next thing I would definitely add would be duct tape. Of course, this is Gorilla Tape, but duct tape can be used in almost any emergency situation. I've seen people tape up a radiator hose just to get home. Not saying I did it, but I've seen it done. Then, of course, you're going to want to level because if you're hanging pictures of that little hammer over there, you're going to want to make sure it's level. I would get a little small level like this. We can get a bigger one later. Of course, every house needs screwdrivers. You're going to have your Phillips and your standard. You can get them in sets of two. I can tell you, you can even go to the Dollar Tree sometimes and find some that are good for around the house. But these two right here, the standard, the standard screwdriver and the number two Phillips head, 
will work pretty much anything that you have in the house. I, you really don't need any more. I know they set them, sell them in set of eight. If you want to get them and they're on sale, go ahead and do it. All right, the next thing would be the tape measure. You're going to want to get a tape measure because you're going to buy another one if you do any woodworking because they always disappear. They go away with your carpenter pencils at the same time. I think they go somewhere together. The next thing would be the pipe wrench. If you're doing anything in plumbing, you're going to want a pipe wrench. The little guy on the top, probably a little small for that, but the guy on the bottom is about 10 inches long and he will suffice for anything around the house. And last but not least is the pliers. Pliers come in many different sizes and shapes. But this was a set that I got on sale. They're made by Cobalt. Let's go from left to right. The left are your tongue and groove pliers. Sometimes they're called the channel locks. Channel locks is a name brand again, kind of like Crescent. You probably don't need those, but if they come in the set, go ahead and use them. Because they will help in your plumbing around the house. Then you have your needle nose, or the next one over. Well, you know, why don't I just zoom in a little so you can see these a little closer. Sorry about the wiggle. You have your needle nose pliers. Those are great for any kind of electronics. They also do have a wire cutter on the bottom part of the blade. Then you have your wire cutters by themselves right here. They will can open up and cut any of the wires you have, electronic wires. Then you have your lineman pliers. Your lineman pliers are pretty heavy duty. They also have a wire cutting capability on that. Then of course, this last set right here, a lot of people call them pliers, but they're actually called slip joint pliers because they can go into two different sizes. So if you want to know the correct name, it's slip joint, not just plier. All right, now that we've got your home toolkit done, let's move on to woodworking. I'd recommend getting a rubber mallet, which is what you see pictured here. Yeah, a little guy got back in there. He just needed some more air time. Get a rubber mallet because it's not going to dent your wood, which a regular hammer is going to dent your wood when you're trying to fit your pieces together. You'll understand more as we get into this. And then, of course, you're going to want a tape measure. Just go get a tape measure. You'll thank me later. And then I would add in a level. This is a little bit larger level. It's going to give you a better level when you're working on larger pieces than that little bullet level. Trust me, the little bullet level is not going to work as well as a large level like this. These really aren't that expensive. You can get plastic ones that are pretty cheap, I think under $10 at Lowe's. The next thing I would add to my toolkit is a square. You got the 90 degree square. I picked this one up at Walmart for like $4. So it's not that expensive. But if you're gonna get one kind of square, I would get this speed square. There are so many things you can do with the speed square and we'll learn those as we go on. <laughs> oh, look at that. I actually found two tape measures at the same time. The next thing I would add in there, and this is a new add for me in my basic kit, is a ball peen hammer and a pry bar. You don't have to have the ball peen hammer. You can use a regular hammer for this, but we're going to be taking apart some pallets and this is probably going to help because it'll help you save about three square inches or so of the wood by using the pry bar and a hammer. Oh, and then another, wow, this, this, this is the day you need to mark on your calendar. I found three tape measures in my shop at one time. All right, from here, let's move on to some of the power tools. We're moving on to power tools. I'm going to give you two recommendations for your first power tool purchase. And then a third one is a bonus. So the first one I'm showing right here is a drill. It's a 20 volt drill. You don't have to get battery operated. You can get a corded drill and they're much cheaper. The only thing that a battery operate offers you is you don't have to go find a power cord and an outlet every time you go somewhere. So if you're working outside a lot, battery is the way to go. But it doesn't have to be a DeWalt either. DeWalt 
Some people say it's the top of the line. I really like them, but for a beginner, you don't need DeWalt. I started out with some generic brand that is not even made anymore, and I've just worked my way up to DeWalt. The second purchase, or maybe even your first, would be the circular saw. The circular saw is very nice. Of course, this one's battery operated also, and they do have corded versions, and they're not bad. But the one thing I would like to caution you about is if you buy a circular saw at a secondhand store or a pawn shop, check the blade. If the blade really wiggles a lot, just put it back down and go somewhere else. As a beginner, you don't want to deal with that. Yes, it is fixable, but oftentimes, but that's not a headache you need right now. You want to cut a straight line and you don't want to be upset if you start cutting crooked lines because your blade's not correct. I told you I was gonna give you three. This is my third choice. This is usually used in conjunction with the drill. You can drill a hole and right after that you can screw in the screw so you don't lose your spot. That's what I use it for. Yeah, it may be the lazy way to do it, but it's kind of nice to have. This is not a necessity. You can do everything with the drill. Okay, it's been a little while since I finished the first part of the videos, and then as my daughter was editing it, she said, hey dad, you didn't do an ending. So here's the ending. Subscribe, like, hit the bell notification. Um, I'll have more videos coming out. The next one is going to be on plumbing. So a leaky faucet I fixed in the house and kind of showing you the basic. We're using some of the tools that we put in the toolbox. So you'll be, actually do some application to what was on this first video in the next video. And I'll have a couple other ones that I'm working on right now. Um, hopefully we'll get them in. So see you next time.